Bob came in and he described this book to me. He described really this character, Frank Sharon. As he did, he became very emotional about it. And I realized that was the connection. Whatever you need me to do, I'm available. I know if he could tap into that character that way, based on the structure of the story and the situation these people found themselves in, I know I could go there because it's genuine and it's real. Frank, it's time. It's time you say what happened. The scale of the movie's big, but it's intimate. It's personal. I don't need to see his face, but I don't want to see it too wide. No, no, this has her in it. All right. Let's go this way. Okay. Let's see what we get into. Well, his enthusiasm for the project, his enthusiasm for what you bring is really palpable. He's telling you that you've got to leave. He's a dream to work with, no matter who you are on the film. Looks good. To me, it was like if I were a tightrope walker and Marty is the net. So you feel you can go and you can take a chance. You learn everything again. Every picture. Almost every setup, you learn again. Marty is a stickler for detail, and he also loves the reference, and he wants to know what was real. There's a ton of visual material at the very beginning, so what you get is what's inside Marty's head very early on, instead of spending months trying to sort of, like, prize it out of your director. That's what it is. Marty seems to be as committed now as he was as a young filmmaker. <laughs> I look at it in bewilderment because there's not many directors half his age that would have the energy to do it. We wanted to make a movie that, that ultimately add up to a life. Yeah, Frankel on Bob just waiting and gets out of the car. Okay. Got it. Okay? I was just getting the fucking car. <laughs> it's hysterical.